serve him on a Monday. I serve the Lord. I serve him on a Tuesday. I serve the Lord. I serve him on a Wednesday. I serve the Lord. God is dead in Sunday. I serve him. I serve the Lord. 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 Serve him. I serve him in the morning. I serve the Lord. Serve him. I serve him at noonday. I serve the Lord. Serve him. I serve him in the evening.
sang a verse right here. One of, one of these old days. Oh, Lord, and it won't be long. You're gonna, you gonna look for me. sanctuary of the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church aka better known as the Mount because every Sunday, every Wednesday it goes down 
at the mount. Listen, beloved, we're getting ready to pray. We want you to do, I want you to do me two favors. If you are enjoying this worship experience, simply just send us some hearts to let us know that you are enjoying this worship experience. Listen, we're not asking anybody for any money. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you have that right and opportunity. But we serve a God that will supply our every need. We got a God that will supply not only our every need, but he'll supply our wants. So if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, simply download, give a fire, look up the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church, Lynette, Alabama, or you can simply come by the church, or you can send it to our P.O. box. That'll be lifted on the screen later on in worship. Amen. Now, secondly, I, I heard what the governor said. I, I heard what the governor said. I want you to be wise. I want you to be wise. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to put it like I said it on our prayer call. I'm going to let y'all go outside first, then I'll come outside a little bit later. What are you saying, Johnson? Mount Hermon Baptist Church will not be opening no time soon, all right? I want you to hear it from my mouth. We are enjoying coming to church, being on Cyber Sanctuary, but we got enough senior members that I have to protect. We got enough young members that I got to protect. And then secondly, I'm going to protect the community of West Sherman. Amen? Amen. So when we do decide to open up, I will let you know. Thank you, Governor, but Mount Hermon is not opening up anytime soon. Amen? Amen. Simply, let's get ready to go to prayer. Uh, let's go old school James Cleveland that simply says, all day and all night, angels keep watching over me. Come on, singers, grab your mics and help me, help me get ready to pray.
be selfish, but I talked to you this morning. Going to talk to you again tonight. Going to talk to you again in the morning. But Master, would you grant me preaching power? that I may preach till you get happy. Will you grant us preaching power that some sinner may say, what must I do to be saved? It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen, amen.
heaven, I minister music. Brother Wendell Brooks, Brother Carl Hoffer, Brother Earl Johnson. Amen, amen. To the baddest media man that has stood out with us, Brother Melvin Diddy Boy Floyd. Amen. Do us a favor, show them some love by simply showing them some hearts. Amen. Because they go back and watch it while you're watching it live. They go back and watch it. So just simply show them some love. Show them some love. Amen. Again, we say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. We know that this is a time that is emotional because this is somebody's first Mother's Day without their mother. This is somebody's first uh, Mother's Day without their wife. Amen. Or their grandmother. So we simply just simply say happy Mother's Day to everyone and those who are uh, mother who is resting on the other side. This too shall pass. Time brings about a change. Amen. Amen. And simply, only thing I can tell you, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God. Every now and then I think about my mama, I just simply say, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God Smiled on me. He's been good to me. My grandmama taught me this as a young boy. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved us. Throw your head back and help me. Oh, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God. Just say one more verse and I'll leave y'all alone. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the
tell me. Father, it's preaching time. I ask that you hide me behind the old rugged cross. That your people do not see Lamar, but they see you. For, sir, we would see Jesus. This is thy servant prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms number 46. Psalms number 46, verse number 1. Just the A clause, but I'm going to read the whole verse number 1, but just the A clause. Amen. Simply share this service. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend. Psalms number 46, verse number 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let me say that one more time. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And I just want to talk about God is our refuge. God is our refuge. My brothers and sisters, as I find myself preaching through the book of Psalms through this pandemic and walking to the road of Pentecost through Bible study, I'm learning more and more about God. Now, some of you want wondering, saying, Reverend, you've been preaching 20 years, been pastoring three years, you've pastored for seven. What do you mean that you're learning more about God? God is so sovereign that he doesn't give you everything at one time. You got to learn him daily. Can, can I come down your street? It's just like a relationship. You don't tell everybody about you in the first couple of weeks. They got to get to know you. They got to get to learn you. Because my grandmama told me a long time ago, don't give everybody your playbook on how to love you. Sometimes they got to figure you out. Sometimes they're going to get mad at you because they don't understand you. But by and by, if you stay closer to that person, you will learn their likes and they don't like. I done snuck in your back door. That's the type of God we serve. He don't put everything down on the table in front of you. He got to put you through some trials, some tribulations. He got to put you through some tests. He got to put you through some ups and some downs because he want to know, baby, even in your darkest moment, can you trust me? Uh, you're looking at me in that tone. This this is considered a hymn of the church. Matter of fact, it's, it, it's the soprano section of the hymn book of Israel. It, it goes along with Psalms number 42, 44, and 46, and 48. It is like a hymn to the church that they begin to sing. God is our refuge and our strength, a brave present help in the time of trouble. Is there anybody other than the preacher that know that when you're in trouble, he's still your strength. When you're in trouble, he's still your refuge. When you're in trouble, you can count on him even when you can't trace him. Notice what he says. Notice what he says. He says, he says, this is a millennium song. This is Koran. Koran was one of the, the, uh, the, the hymn writers. He was related to Moses. You remember, they, they asked the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I don't know about you, but right now, America is a strange land. Right now, the world is in a strange land. Johnson, how can you still be happy? How can you still sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Simply because he put a song in my heart that you can't sing. I got a song, maybe you can help me redeem. I am redeemed, been bought by the blood. Jesus has changed my whole life. So since I got a song that says I'm redeemed, I can say he's my help. Okay, you're still looking at me. You're still looking at me. Uh, it says the, the whole thing of Psalms 46 is God is always there to help. One more time. God is always there to help. One more time. You're going to catch this on next Sunday. God is always there to help. But he puts a comma there that says, Johnson Pauls, because I got something else I want you to tell him. God is always there to help, comma, providing refuge, security, and peace. Okay, you done missed it already because you're trying to figure out, Johnson, how is God is going to be there? And here it is. He's going to provide you 
refuge. And that word refuge means safety, shelter, pursuit of danger or trouble. He's there to give you shelter in a time of a storm. Not only does he give me shelter, but he gives me security. Okay, I told y'all a couple of Sundays ago about that lady who kept calling her pastor. Said, Pastor, two men keep following me. Pastor said, have you called the police? She said, yes, the police is no longer taking my call. She said, well, tell me what the men are doing here. They're, they're waiting on me when I walk outside my house. They hold the door open for me when I get on the bus. They right there when I get off the bus to help me down. Pastor says, say no more. That's your security team. That's grace and mercy. Anybody know that even in the pandemic, God gives you grace and mercy. Even during death, he gives you grace and mercy. Even during sickness, he gives you grace and mercy. And who wouldn't serve a God that only gives you shelter, but he gives you security? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He, he, he gives me, he gives me safety. He gives me security. But then I like it. He gives me peace. Now I said he gives me peace. Now, 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 now the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall guard your heart, your mind, and your soul. And, and one thing, uh, Warren always called me, Reverend Warren Goss always called me, and when we talk, that every time we get off the phone, he said, Reverend, guard your heart, guard your ears, and I love you. That's, that's what he tell me every time. Guard your heart, guard your ears, and I love you. And I understand that's what peace is. Peace is guarding your heart and your ears, that you don't listen to no negativity. You don't let no negativity come in your heart. That's the type of God we serve that he'll give you shelter, security, and peace. Uh, y'all still looking at me. Y'all still looking at me. I told y'all, it said this is a song of the millennium. Psalms number 46 is a wonderful soprano song. Now, that means the altos and the tenors couldn't sing it. It's for the soprano section. But I thank God, even though this psalm is for the soprano section, I can still testify with the sopranos that he's still my refuge. Okay, okay. Uh, let me let me bust your bubble because uh, I told y'all God is doing a new thing. And I know you don't like to hear that God is doing a new thing because you say, Reverend, God is unchangeable. He's immutable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. No, God is doing a new thing to show you that when you come to church, you don't worship the choir, you worship me. I, and a lot of us have messed up and started worshiping athletes so he shut down the stadium. Start worshiping singers so he shut down your concert. Start worshiping the golf course so he shut it down. And even some of y'all won't even come to church so he shut it down to show you that he's still God. Okay, you still looking at me. See, when the choir gets up to sing, they're not singing to you. They're singing to him. And I don't care what you say, when I come to church, I ain't preaching to y'all, I'm preaching to him. Because I got an audience with him. But if the soprano is singing a song and you can relate to the song, you ought to at least wave your hands. You ought to at least say amen. And when the preacher or somebody is praying and you can go along with what they're saying, then you ought to open up your mouth and say something. And here he is saying, God is my refuge and my strength. It is not the, the blues, but it's a hallelujah. Uh, you, you know, uh, I, I grew up listening to B.B. King. The thrill is gone. You don't act holy on me all you want to. Uh, that, that's a blues song because he, he's hurting because his, his baby on left him, so he's saying the thrill is gone. Okay, let me come down to your street. Uh, I don't know if it was ZZ Hill or somebody that says, Who's making love? to your old lady while you are out making love. So y'all don't want to talk about that stuff. And God is saying, who you out trying to make love to when I'm here waiting on you? Who you out messing with when I'm here waiting on you? I'm the God that saved you. I'm the God that loved you. I'm the God that take care of you. Why are you out there messing with somebody else when you ought to be giving me intimacy? Why are you out there cheating on me when they can't wake you up like I woke you up? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. song but it's a hallelujah because God is sufficient God is the security God is the supreme God is God God is the one that can do what nobody else can do okay y'all looking at me I told y'all uh, this is a hymn of praise celebrating deliverance and and if God has ever done anything for you you ought to give him the praise if God has ever healed
healed your body, if God has ever taken care of you, if God has done anything, you ought to have a praise in your lip and you ought to join with the soprano section and saying, God is our refuge and strength are very present in the time of trouble. You're still looking at me in that tone that I don't want you to look at me in. So let me go down to verse number two because verse number two tells me, therefore, will not we fear? Okay, okay, the reason why we're not fearful as saints. So let me let me clear the air. Let me clear the air. I'm not fearful. I just got common sense. And the Bible tells me that I preach after it says, tempt not the Lord thy God. So if I know there's danger, why would I walk towards danger talking about the blood is covering me? Why would I walk through danger talking about God has got me when he gives me common sense? James chapter 1 verse number 5 says any man who acts a wisdom are the acts of God and sometimes I realize that some folks just ain't smart some folks ain't got the wisdom but when you got the wisdom of God on you you don't fear a thing okay let me show you because y'all looking at me it says therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea Though the waters thereof roar and trouble, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, then it says, see lie, which simply means to pause. No, notice what it says. After you pause, he says, there's a river, the stream, where else shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Hold on, wait a minute, because y'all have missed it. Verse number one, he tells me, that God is our refuge and our strength, very help in a time of trouble. Then he tells me, even if the earth shall be removed, even if the earth go through some groaning or the earthquake, even though the earth got to go into the sea, sea lie, which means pause, but there's another Okay, y'all don't miss it. See, see, you too busy worried about this land. This world ain't my home. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. That's what a hymn writer put pen to paper to say, I trust in God. Whether I don't land or I don't see it, I trust in God. And because I trust in him, can't nobody shake my faith. Though the earth started acting up, though we got COVID-19, we got the swine flu or whatever disease, I will not be moved. He says, he says, because trouble going to come. Uh, I'm tired of preachers telling folks that you ain't going to have trouble. Even Jesus had trouble. And I ain't no better than Jesus. I told you last Sunday, John chapter 16, verse number 33 says, in this world you're going to have trials and tribulation, but See, see, you got to go through some things. That's the trying of your testimony because if you ain't got no test, you ain't going to have no money and you can't tell nobody how good God is unless you've been through something. I told y'all when I was a young preacher, I would pray like the old preacher, talk like the old preacher, and finally an old man pulled me over to the side and said, little boy, you still wet behind the ears. You ain't been through nothing. So you can't tell nobody he's a God to the motherless and your mama's still here. You can't tell nobody Nobody. He's a healer if you ain't never been sick. But all oh, June 23rd, 2012, when my mama closed her eyes in death, I can tell the world he's a mother to the motherless. Oh, just a couple months later, got diagnosed with cancer not one but two times. I can tell you he's a healer.
church knowing that God is the God of philosophy. I know you like Aristotle's and Socrates. I know you like Beethoven and all those great Aristotle's, but God is even the God of them. He's the God of the sun God. He's the God of the moon God. He's the God, uh, okay, okay, let me come and get you because in the Old Testament, they began to pray to other gods. They began to pray to Baal and all them, and God had to show us that even Baal got to bow down to him. Come here, oh, because y'all looking at me. Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal, they meet on a mountain called Mount Carmel, and he said, y'all go first. So they took their bullocks and put it on the altar, and they begin to call Baal. Morning to night, they begin to call Baal. Elijah said, Baal must be asleep, because Baal ain't answering y'all. And finally, it was Elijah's turn. Elijah said, give me some water. Dig a trench around my altar. Fill it up with water. Put water on my altar. And Elijah looked up to God and said, God, not because of me, but because of you. Show them that you are God. And you know what happened? God answered by fire. He licked up all the water. He burned up the burnt offering. And they realized that God is still God. Oh, y'all still looking at me. Is there anybody that ever had to put your God on the test? Is there anybody had to say, God, I've been doing this for a long time. Your word says if I call on you and call you right, your word says that you are here and answer my prayer. So God, I need you to show up and show out. And he may not show up when you want him to come, but the late Dr. B.T. Hopkins said he's the slowest man you'll ever meet, but yet he's always on time. showed him that he's God. Noah had to stay on the ship and God still showed him that he's God. And you mean this little thing we going through and we can't know that he's still God? Baby, if you able to lift your hand, if you able to inhale and exhale, you ought to let the world know he's still God. I know we done lost some people. I've lost several people getting ready to go bury another person this week, but I still say he's God because guess what, baby? How do you know he's God? Because he says, I'm, I'm God. Okay, y'all looking at me. Y'all looking at me. Not only he's God, he's God, refuge and content of the nation of the world. He, he, he's God. He, he got the whole world in his hands. He got you and me in his hands. Do you not know that he knows what's going on? Can you go to the book of Revelation that talks about Babylon, that great city who got beside themselves and God had to show Babylon that he's still God and we going around here talking about make America great again. America has never been great. So we can't make it great again. So God says, I'm the potter, y'all the clay. So I'm going to make America how I want America to be. Ain't nobody talking to me. You keep on talking about going back to normal. I ain't going back to normal because this pandemic has shown me and got me closer to God this pandemic has shown me the mighty hands of God. This pandemic has shown me, has opened up my eyes, so I can't come to church normal. I can't come to church the same way. Matter of fact, before I get to church, I'm already happy because somebody wished that they had legs to walk. Somebody wished they had a voice to talk. And since I got legs, I'm a run for them. Since I got hands, I'm a clap for them. And matter of fact, I might even break out in the dance because can't nobody hold me like like Jesus. Can't nobody keep me like Jesus. He'll keep me in perfect peace if I learn how to keep my mind stayed on him. Uh, he says, God, he's God. And since he's God, I got to go. Since he's God, my soul getting happy. Since he's God, Verse number 10 tells me what to do. Verse number 10 tells me to be still. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. You too busy worried about what's going to happen. You too busy worried about what we're going to do. Verse number 10 tells me since he's God, be still. Okay, one more time. One more time. But I, I know what the problem is. I, I know what the problem is. You, you, you're, you're too busy home to go. among 
the heathens and I will be exalted in the earth. See, he wants you to be still because he's trying to get some heathens' attention. Okay, one more time. I, I, know, I know you don't like this type of preaching. I said, he wants you to be still because he's trying to get some heathens' attention. And you might got some heathens living in your house. And so if they see that you are worried, see that you are scared, then they're not going to trust in God. See, the world right now is looking at the church. I, I, I heard a joker had the nerve to say that the church will close and, and y'all can't worship your God. No, baby, the church would never close. The building may close, but the church won't close. My Bible tells me heaven and earth will pass away, but his word shall live forever. As long as I got the word in my heart and I got a voice to talk, the church shall never close because I stand on the street corner and say, hear ye the word of the Lord. I stand in the grocery store say hear ye the word of the Lord. I stand wherever I need to stand and say hear ye the word of the Lord because I've learned to be still and know that he is God. Okay, he said, he said, he said, hold on, uh, the other day, the other day, uh, me and Warren go walking, so <clears throat> we did three miles, and so we were listening to a, somebody in the house, next to his house, as we were sitting outside, had word in them, but didn't have the content. So I'm talking to Warren. I said, "Man, I in my older days, in my younger days, I would have went over there and, and checked it. But God gave us uh, an opportunity because He asked Warren a question, and Warren said, "Well, there's a pastor back here. Let's go talk to him." And so as he's talking and he's talking, and he's noticing that I'm looking at him, and he talked about a good ten minutes. Before I could get a word in, I said, wait a minute, repeat your question again. So he repeats his question. Then I answer his first part. Then he began to talk some more. And I said, hold on. Now what you just said, you keep contradicting yourself. Because he had the nerve to say that God won't allow his children to get sick. I said, wait a minute. What you going to do with John chapter 11 where Jesus tells them that this sickness is not unto death? I said, what are you going to do? Because he's a man of God and I'm a man of God and all of us get sick. Because if you never got sick, you wouldn't know God is a healer. So you got to be careful what you say to folks because you can turn some people off. I stopped by here to tell somebody, I don't care if you had to go through sickness, I don't care if you had to go through death, just be still and know that he is God. And what you, I know you, 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 you want to be like Job, you want to question God, God, why you do this, God, why you do that. But remember when you question God, God got a question for you. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Where were you when I created heaven and earth. Where were you when my son died on the cross? And if I went through it, you can go through it because the present suffering of this present age is to get us closer with him. Can, can, can I tell you what Paul says? Paul says, but these light afflictions. I, I, I know it seemed hard to you. I know it seemed rough to you, but to God it's light. It's a light affliction that we got to go through. And notice, beloved, what I said, we got to go through. We're not going to pause in it. We're not going to stay in it. We're just going through. So you know, I close with him saying, God is our refuge. A very present, y'all missed it already. Said God is our refuge hand strength a very present help in the time of struggle but you got to see Calvary right here in verse number 10 and verse number 11 verse number 10 says be still and know that I am God <laughs> I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I just want to ask somebody, do you know who God is? You know we used to pray God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is there anybody here that know who God is? God 
God is our help. God is our shelter. God will take care of you. And that's why I love the hymn that says, Be not this man, whatever be the time, God will take care of you. Is there anybody here that know God will? take care of you. Is there anybody here that ever had to try the Lord? Well, you're still looking at me in that tone like you don't know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost y'all know what happened God the Father had a conversation with God the Son and God the Son said God to the Father prepare me a body and I'll go down and redeem Lamar I'll go down and save the world y'all know what happened he came down 42 generations he came down in a town called Bethlehem y'all gonna pray to me he came down born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes he came down to heal the lamb he came down to save sick souls he came down to deliver us y'all know what happened he walked around this world for 33 years years. He had some haters. He had some scribes. He had some Pharisees that didn't want to see Jesus heal the world. And you know what they said? Jesus got to die. We got to get rid of him. We can't take this. And y'all know what happened? They marched him up a hill called Calvary. They marched him up the Via Della Rosa. They marched him up Golgotha Hill. Y'all know what happened on the hill called Calvary. He died. I said he died. Anybody here no, he died. He died till the sun refused to shine. He died till the moon went down in blood. He died till the earth began to reel and rock. He died that they said, surely this must be the son of man. He died till heaven got the news. Died all day Friday but I'm so glad that ain't the end of the story what happened Johnson he went down to the gates of hell kicked the door in said Satan give me my keys cause in the morning in the morning I'm gonna get up with all power in my hand y'all know what happened early Early, oh shucks, shucks, shucks. Early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power in his hands. That's why I can say, God is my refuge. God is my strength. God is helping the time of trouble. Is there anybody here that know he's your help? Anybody here that know you can lean on him? Well, we got a pandemic, so don't you touch nobody. Well, slip your arms around yourself. Hug yourself. Rock yourself. Say self, be still. And know he's God. Hug yourself and say, Self, don't you worry. He's still gone. Hug yourself, rock yourself, love on yourself, and say, Self, if he did it for Moses, he can do it for me. If he did it for Nehemiah, he can do it for me. If he did it for David, he can do it for me. And if he did it for Jesus, he can do it for me. If he did it for my mama, he can do it for me. If he 
did it for my daddy, he can do it for me. If he did it for my sister, he can do it for me. If he did it for my brother, he can do it for me. Just got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just got to hug yourself, got to rock yourself and tell yourself, hang in there, self. Don't give up, self. The same God that did it before can do it again. Y'all looking at me in that tone. I don't want you to look at me in, but I just heard from heaven and he told me to tell you help is on the way don't you give up help is on the way what kind of help Johnson the Holy Ghost is getting ready to breathe on you the Holy Ghost getting ready to show up and when it show up he make me want to shake when it show up he make me want to dance when the Holy Ghost show up so y'all waiting for Pentecostal Sunday but I got it I got the Holy Ghost I got it down in my feet I got it in my hands I got it in my voice how do you know you got it cause there's a Negro I want to cuss out but the Lord won't let me when they scandalize my name I want to put my hands on them but the Lord won't let me cause he told me to stand still and see him work and I see him work cause the same ones who lied on me are the same ones that watched me week out the week the same ones that were in my corner turned around to be backstabbers but I got it that Holy Ghost that make me love my enemies I got it the Holy Ghost is there anybody got the Holy Ghost then do me a favor slip your arms around yourself hug yourself say self be not this made whatever be the time God will God will take care of you. I got to do it one time and I'm going to my seat. I may not know three things. I may not know two things. I may not know one thing, but I know. If I learn how 
to be still. I put it all in his hands. I put Mount Hermon in his hands. I put Lion Negroes in his hands. I put my life in his hands. And I trust him with my whole heart. I trust him to make me a better preacher. I trust him to make me a better man of God. And one day, he gonna make me a husband. But until then, I trust in God. Anybody here trust in God? I don't say it to get y'all to shout, but I say it because I've been trusting him. I had some ups, I had some downs, I had some tears, I had some sadness, but I trust God that he'll take care of me. I don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow got his own worries. I worry about today, and he told me, I give you this day your daily bread. I don't care if they take my Cadillac, I don't care if they take my Mercedes, I don't care if they take all my tailor suits, I trust in God, cause I trust them before I had tailor suits, I trust them before I had a Mercedes, I trust them before I had a Cadillac, I trust them before I had a Jaguar, and if I trust them when I was eight years old, if I trust them when I was 18, if I trust them when I was 28, oh hell, I'm a trust them right now anybody here gonna trust in the Lord then say yeah the doors of the church are open you can come to our viral invitation. You just got to trust them. Ah. Uh -huh. 
to our cyber sanctuary we thank you for your support of this ministry keep on trusting in God knowing that he's your refuge and your strength he's helping a time of trouble and then know to be still and know that he is God until Wednesday until we have our cyber bible study know that we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Join us Monday through Saturday 7 a.m. on our prayer call. We simply have that up on the Facebook page. The Mount Hermon Baptist Church and yours truly the Pilgrim Baptist Church Dr. Frederick James, the First Baptist Church of Northport, Alabama Pastor Carlos Calhoun. Join us every Monday through Saturday 7 a.m for prayer and a devotional message. Father, thank you for keep on being our, self, our safety, our security, and our peace. Keep on blessing us as only you can. Thank you for the praise report on yesterday thank you that you keep on showing us you're still in control so since we know that you're in control we can take our hands off of it and let you work it out somebody need to know that this week God let you work it out thank you for the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church thank you for allowing us to be pastor and people Bind us so close together that one came forward without the other. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless to the only wise God, be dominion power both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.